everyone for joining our webinar, our best practices for Get Out the Vote um, operation in 2018. We're going to give everyone a couple minutes to kind of log in and um, get set up, so just bear with us for a couple more seconds. Um, so thank you again for joining us. Excited to have you all here. So it's um, my name is Ashley Wilson. I'm one of the account executives over at NGP Van. Um, Amanda, go ahead. Uh, yeah, my name is Amanda Colom. I'm the general manager for organizing at NGP Van. Um, to give a little background, I've been with the company for over 10 years. I actually started in our client services department mm -hmm. um, and then spent a couple of years there and then I moved into our product department um, where I spent a lot of time digging in and helping us figure out and work with our clients to figure out um, you know, what we were building and how we were building it mm -hmm. um, to help sort of maximize uh, organizing efforts in the field um, in my spare time. Um, <laughs> I've also uh, jumped out and taken a couple leaves. Um, the company has been really great about letting me do that. Mm -hmm. So I was the get out the vote director for Senator Warren's statewide campaign in 2012. I did the same thing for Senator Markey's special in 2013 um, and then also helped out on the side uh, for the mm -hmm. coordinated in Massachusetts in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and in my uh, early life pre-NGP van, um, I bounced around uh, on a bunch of different campaigns as a field organizer um, and, and doing GOTV. Actually, our, uh, our VP of engineering, Drew Miller, and I met in Iowa. Um, okay. He was the RFD and I was the GOTV director for um, CD4 in Iowa. Awesome. So um, GOTV is super near and dear to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and maximizing our tools during GOTV is something that I feel really passionately about. Um, so I'm very excited to awesome. be here doing this webinar. And yeah. Ashley, you have a bunch of background in GOTV Yeah, as well. no, definitely. So I started in 2008 with the Obama campaign down in Lynchburg, Virginia, which was exciting. Um, then uh, took a little break and then have been working with um, campaigns in upstate New York, so state ledge, um, city council races, and then recently, up until before, I started over at NGP, uh, working with um, HFA and upstate New York again. Awesome. So, um, yeah, a lot of GOTV experience. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, so I know what you all are going through right now, yes. trying to get ready, so we're hoping that this webinar will be super helpful to you guys. Yes. 27 days out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so just a reminder to you all that you are in listen-only mode and also you can join the conversation on Twitter by tagging at NGP Van and also ask any questions on the GoToWebinar chat box. So make sure to keep those questions coming in. Cool. So uh, for those folks who may not know what GOTV stands for, Amanda, what would you say your definition of GOTV? Yeah, I mean, I think first of all, I like to say GOTV is really what the entire campaign is building towards, right? right. It's all GOTV for um, people who maybe haven't been involved at all before stands for get out the vote, mm -hmm. right? And that's exactly what you're trying to do. Um, so you are uh, going through in all of the work that you did for the campaign, identifying your supporters, persuading people into being supporters, right. um, and then also all the work that you did building out your volunteer base, right? It's about marrying those two things yep. um, so that in the final days, and especially on election day, you have a really strong operation um, and you are going out there and you are getting your people out to vote. Right, no, definitely. And just like you said, for and if you have any canvas search organizers who just had no idea what they were doing yeah. all summer knocking on doors, you tell them that this is what it's for. Like yes. this is what we've been working the whole totally. year summer for. Totally. Just at this point. And so at this point, after you've talked to all these people all summer, so who are you actually targeting on GOTV? Right. Uh, that's a really important point, right? Because I think um, the way that I try to think of it, all of the contact that you're doing over the course of the campaign, it's a funnel into mm -hmm. GOTV, right? right? So you're starting with a much more expansive universe. Mm -hmm. um, again, trying to sort of test out different kinds of people. Who are you able to persuade over to your side? Mm -hmm. Talking to as many people as possible, right? right? Yep. Um, and then the end goal, right, is that you are talking to the people who you have actually convinced to support you to get out and vote for you. Right. Um, and GOTV especially, right, I think this is also an important distinction. It's not just about dragging people out on election day. 
It's also about, you know, building out and reminding people to vote in the run up to election day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's really important, I think, to um, remind people at least once in the days preceding election day, and then hopefully you're able to get through your whole universe again, and we'll dive a little bit right. into how you might do that or how you might think about doing that. No, um, but really, you know, the, the sort of top line there is it's about contacting your supporters yep. to get them out to vote on election day. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So now that, you know, we're 27 days out, when would you say is the best time to start your GOTV program? Yeah, and this is something that I actually want to um, make a clear distinction on, right? Mm -hmm. I think GOTV itself, again, is sort of traditionally like the final four or five days of the election. Um, it can expand out, right, to a week before, to two weeks before. It can be a little bit more condensed depending on, you know, your special snowflake race, right? <laughs> right. That's something else that I want to raise up, right? Campaigns um, can vary wildly in terms of resources, how many volunteers you have, right. what your campaign infrastructure looks like, right? Um, but generally, we're talking about like the last two weeks of the campaign. Mm -hmm. um, now, that being said, you want to prepare for GOTV, you know, uh, before that. So hopefully people are engaged in that preparation right now. Yeah, and definitely want to also know that you might be working on early voting GOTV. Yes, right? that's a great So point. there's definitely, yeah. um, you know, states who have early voting right now. So you might be working on early voting right. um, GOTV programs and as well as your election day GOTV programs. So yeah. this will be helpful for either either one. No, and that's a really incredible point, actually, because obviously we've seen a big expansion in the number of states that have early vote available, right. and um, frankly, it's an area where the laws state to state right. have been changing quite a bit, um, but I think for for us, again, I'm, in, I'm from Massachusetts, right, and that's where I, I you know, <laughs> they're very near and dear to my heart um, and we have early vote you know it, it's a much newer thing in Massachusetts right. so I think um, to your point having a specific GOTV program for early vote right. and thinking about and tracking how that impacts what you're going to need to do and what your universe is going to be right. in those final days because obviously right like yeah. If you've been able to get a ton of your supporters to, to vote, vote early. during early vote, yep. um, then that allows you to really maximize your time during yep. final GOTV and election day. Yeah, definitely. So now we're going to talk about like the messaging on GOTV, like when you're going out to talk to all these folks. What is your message going to look like? Yeah, and I, I want to give a, um, a shout out to the Analyst Institute right now, just mm -hmm. because I think, um, you know, if you're not aware, they're an amazing organization. They do a ton of research and work with campaigns all over the place um, in order uh, to put together a set of recommendations right. um, around scripts, around messaging, and around sort of tactics um, that they have seen be especially uh, successful during GOTV. Right. Um, so, you know, I think we're going to go over some of the standard mes messaging and some of it's going to incorporate some of their recommendations, mm -hmm. um, but just definitely want to put in that plug. Like, if you want to hear more about this, if you want to learn more about this, um, Analyst Institute is definitely where it's at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the main message so, the main messaging now is definitely talk about the process of voting, right? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. exactly. And the reason for that, again, right, is like, you, for the most part, aren't doing persuasion yeah. or ID at this point in the campaign, yeah. right? Like the people who you're talking to are actually the people who you have identified as your supporters. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, with that being said, right, like what you're trying to get them to do is really visualize like when and how are they going to go out and vote. Right. Um, and again, going back to what research has shown that really having that plan to vote um, and reminding people, hey, you have voted before, this is something that's easy, it's rewarding, it should be part of your life as a right. good citizen, right? Mm -hmm. um, and really trying to help people think through that and make that plan um, should be a lot of what you're having your volunteers talk to people about. Yeah, 
No, for sure, because everyone's schedule is so busy. Yeah. So having that conversation to say, hey, like, when do you think you're going to get to the polls? Right. Is it going to be in the morning, the afternoon? Right. At least now you can put it on your Google calendar. Right. <laughs> I'm going to go vote before I get to work. Yes. <laughs> well, and the other um, thing that I'll, uh, or the other point that I'll raise here, right, is if you are identifying, um, having those conversations with people helps you identify whether or not people need help getting to the polls. That's true, too. Right? right. Um, I think there are a few things more rewarding than being able to give someone a ride to the polls and, and help make sure that they can actually vote. Mm -hmm. um, so building out a ride to the pr polls program and trying to sort of pre-plan and pre-schedule mm -hmm. as many of those rides as you can, mm -hmm. um, I think is, is always a really valuable thing to do. Yeah, and one thing I've heard that some of the share, like car share programs mm -hmm. are offering free rides to the polls. Yeah, so definitely campaigns, definitely look into that and how yep. that could be helpful. So I think, well, we kind of touched on this already, <laughs> um, you know, a verbal commitment is not enough. Yeah. So, you know, really have people start to think about when they're going to vote. Like, okay, it's going to be at two o'clock, three o'clock, right. but just having that whole conversation and mm -hmm. them talking through it is what's going to be the most effective way of getting them to the polls. Totally. And I would also mention confirming the polling locations, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, polling locations can change. There are certain states that um, will add polling locations up until much closer to the election than and you would like. think. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and then we would like. Um, so uh, making sure that you are talking through that person, right? Especially if it's someone who maybe they've moved, mm -hmm. maybe they're a good voter, but they're new to the neighborhood and they haven't voted at that location before. Um, you know, to your point, it's like helping them think through, oh, am I, am I going to do this before I go to work? Am I going to do it when I'm dropping the kids off to go to school, right? right? Or is it after work? Um, you know, I yeah. think traditionally we try and push people to vote as early in the day as possible, Definitely. right? Um, that's why prime time canvassing and contact shift of like four <laughs> to polls close mm -hmm. um, is, is always such a big rush because um, you're, you're usually out there harassing right. people <laughs> um, who definitely haven't voted yet. Um, so yeah, I would say, uh, you know, also trying to emphasize like, hey, are you thinking about this and get it out of the way early in the day and then mm -hmm. you know that it's all set, yep. right? Yeah. All right, so there are exceptions to the, this rule. Um, you know, you may continue persuasion messaging through the end of the campaign, and we see that's especially the case in down ballot races. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and I think just to build on that, you know, and, and again, just to say this webinar is about best practices, right? right? It's not nothing set in stone. I think a really important thing to keep in mind is, um, you know, campaigns should be a reflection of your community, mm -hmm. right? Um, and they should uh, take your, your local interests in mind. Um, the other thing that I will note, right, is uh, luckily primaries are over. Um, <laughs> so a lot of, you know, a, a lot of campaigns will be engaged in coordinated campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, and that also sort of means that you need to be working with the other campaigns up and down the ballot, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, for everything from your universes to your scripts to, um, you know, the volunteers Seriously. who have maybe been working right. for Resources. a bunch of you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, really this slide is about, you know, nothing is going to be absolutely right. set in stone. Yeah. Um, but the important thing uh, to note is if you are still doing some kind of persuasion on a universe closer to election day, as soon as you identify a supporter, you want to make sure that you're layering in that GOTV messaging right. um, so that you're doing the, you know, identification and reminder at yeah. the same time. So friend to friend outreach. So this has been proven that this is the best way to get people to turn out. So, you know, during your trainings or next phone bank, definitely make sure to emphasize that. Make sure you have people pull out their phones and start texting everyone they know. Like, hey, did you register to vote? Registration is, deadlines are coming yes. up soon. I think there's some today, so make sure to do that. Yes. <laughs> and um, also get out the vote. Yep, absolutely. And I, I, the note that I would make about this is, it can be mutually exclusive from whatever universe you're working off of mm -hmm. with the campaign, 
right? Like, no one's going to yell at you if, like you said, you pull out your phone and you text your mom, right? right? Yeah. Or, you know, your family text or your friend group text or whatever it is, right? right? Um, to make sure that those people are, are actually getting out and vote mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and voting and that they have a plan to vote. Right. Um, to your earlier point, if people if your family members or your friends or the people who start telling you like, oh, actually I'm gonna be out of town on election day, right? That's where you should also be saying, hey, is there early vote in your state? Can mm -hmm. you vote absentee, right? right? Um, I think uh, the, the entire concept of friend-to-friend -friend contact or, or what's known as relational voter turnout is really just you are a trusted person uh, to the people that you're contacting, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, what you're telling them is going to matter more than what you know uh, a, even a canvasser a very well-intentioned canvasser right. <laughs> is going to tell them who shows up at their door mm -hmm. and social pressure messaging so this is a good one remind everyone that you know while no one's gonna tell you know no one knows who you're voting for we do know if you voted so to all my friends and family out there that I've already encouraged to vote I will find out if you voted or not <laughs> <laughs> but um, but that to say you know just is that social pressure of saying hey you know you really should do this this is a good thing to do um, you know make sure you go out there and vote right exactly and I think if there are ways right um, depending on the uh, if you're using minivan yep. uh, sometimes mm -hmm. you can have voting history available <laughs> mm -hmm. in the minivan format. Um, to your point, I think underlining, right, no one's going to know who you vote for, right. um, but just the act of voting is part of being a good citizen and mm -hmm. reminding people of that. I think, um, yeah, totally agree with what you said, um, but making sure that it's gentle social pressure, <laughs> right? right? You I don't want to so, so <laughs> call them out on Facebook. Right, right. Okay. You don't want to freak people out. <laughs> All right, I'll try not to. Cool. <laughs> And then there's a first time in low propensity voters. So, you know, also reminding them that, you know, this is, you know, applying that social pressure as well, but also saying that, hey, this is your right. You can go vote. No one should be intimidating you. No one should be turning you away. Um, just make yeah. sure you get out there and vote. Absolutely. And, you know, unfortunately, I think this is something that has become more and more of an issue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've seen uh, voter rights being attacked in different states, mm -hmm. um, but... Voter purging right, going on. Exactly. Right now. Yeah. Um, but making sure that people know and understand, like, this is your right, mm -hmm. like, you are registered, or you can even go get registered, right? right? There are certain states mm -hmm. um, that have same-day registration. You should be aware of what the voter registration deadlines are in your states, right. um, and if there are any requirements, right? Again, unfortunately, we're seeing more voter ID laws okay. um, that, you know, in terms of the documentation that people need to bring with them. Um, so really making sure that you're being aware of that, especially when you're dealing with people who maybe aren't um, as good voters or who are first-time voters. Right. So now let's jump into our GOTV strategy. So you've got your messaging down, you know who you're going to be talking to, so now let's dive into what tactics you can use to kind of get everyone out to vote. Awesome. So you're a GOTV prep. Um, Hopefully, likely, you are engaged in GOTV <laughs> training right now and dry runs. Um, and so this is just to get your volunteers and your team ready for what the last few weeks of you know GOTV, last weeks of campaign are going to look like. So by the time they get to that point where there's an influx of volunteers, an influx of folks wanting to help yes. out, like you already have a structure in place. Absolutely. And I think this is something that um, I really try and instill in GOTV programs that I've run is, hey, the entire process, everything that we've been asking staff and volunteers to do up mm -hmm. to the point of GOTV, right. it's all pretty much the same, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. you're out there, you're trying to contact voters, you're trying to recruit other volunteers, mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be a little more intense, yeah. maybe a lot more intense, <laughs> yeah. um, and some of the some of the specifics might be a little different, right? right? Mm -hmm. Like the script is going to be a little different. Yeah. Um, maybe your shift times, your reporting times are a little bit different. Um, so again, going back to the beginning of the webinar, I think um, you know while the specifics of the script and everything else might not happen until mm -hmm. two weeks before election day, right. um, starting now. Um, in helping people build up and understand
understand like what is going to change and also getting people to sign up yeah, right sure. um, <laughs> yes yeah, you, need uh, <laughs> you need so many tips. <laughs> um, um, and and I think to your point right like GOTV and especially election day that's the biggest influx of just kind of capacity in your campaign yeah. um, and so you, so you want to have a plan for how are you and how are your staff um, or any of the the people who are who have been um, kind of helping you throughout the process mm -hmm. how are they managing you know, everything exactly yeah. mm -hmm. exactly So training for GOTV, um, we talked about this just a second ago. Are you increasing the number of shifts you're, um, that people are working on, um, creating a reporting structure, changing reporting times? Mm -hmm. um, also like um, staging locations, are yeah. you going to add more staging locations throughout your district to have people get closer to where you're going to launch your campuses? Yep. So, um, you know, so training for all of that and getting ready for all of that is definitely necessary. Yep, absolutely. And I think, again, that's just about, you know, the same way that you're trying to teach voters and get voters to think about the plan. I think that's also where, uh, to your point, things like staging locations or if you are trying to layer in something else, right? Like mm -hmm. are you shifting from an open VPB or even maybe like paper phone program to, hey, we think we're going to use something like a predictive dialer, right, right? Um, for the last few days. Mm -hmm. And thinking through how you're starting to introduce any of those changes into your program. Mm -hmm. um, so that you and your staff and your volunteers can kind of road test all of that, yep. right? Yep. Um, because uh, GOTV is so much of it is just about preparation, yep. right? Yep. And um, I think while you want to be able to be really nimble about things and let people know that being nimble is a good thing, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you need to be able to roll with the punches no matter what pops up. Um, you also don't just want to be, you know, blowing the lid off things <laughs> <laughs> in the final 48 hours. Yeah, you need that structure in place. It's yeah. going to be what like, keeps you sane, sane. <laughs> <laughs> through, um, yeah. through election day. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, playing to your strengths. So, you know, step back and evaluate what strengths, you know, your staff and volunteer base has. And this is a good time to see if, there is something lacking you can let's fix it now before right. GOTV starts exactly and I think again that goes to right like uh, to me everything kind of starts with what is your GOTV universe right mm -hmm. like how many people are you actually going to be trying to get through to mm -hmm. um, and then what falls out of that is how are you going to be trying to get through to them yeah right mm -hmm. like one of the amazing things that we've seen in the last few years you know canvassing and phone calls have obviously been super traditional ways and they're still um, effective ways to get through to people right. um, but you know are you going to be layering in an SMS program right. are you going to be layering in things like digital ads right, right? Um, and just thinking through you know as you get down to that final universe of people how are you further carving that up um, to get to the number of touches on each of those people that you need. Right. Um, and again, I think this is an area where it can also, it does really vary depending on, you know, what kind of race you're running. Are you a, a much smaller right. down ballot campaign? Um, even if you're a larger campaign, right? Like, do you have a bunch of staff and a lot of resources, or are you uh, a much more volunteer-led organization, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, and who can you rely on? Um, and I think the, the other point that I like to make on this is um, everybody's job, ideally, is getting smaller right. during GOTV yes. and more focused. Very specific. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, and whether that means, okay, you're going from being an organizer of a much bigger region to being much more focused on a specific area, mm -hmm. or if you are you know, a, a volunteer who's been helping manage um, maybe a couple different precincts or even a couple different communities in your area, right. and then you're being asked to step up and either be a staging location director mm -hmm. um, for a much more specific area or even a canvas coordinator or something right. along those lines. Um, you know, I think that's something that can be really tough for people to manage right. because they feel like, well, I felt like I was doing a good job. Why right. are you taking some of my yeah. job away from me? Yep. 
Um, but really, it's, it's because what you're trying to do is maximize everyone's time mm -hmm. and, and make your organization run as efficiently as possible. Right. Um, and hopefully, you have a bunch of people coming right. out of the woodwork. Yeah, right? and that's the thing to consider. So while this person may feel like, oh, I'm like decreasing in responsibilities because there are way more people who become right. so much more involved during those last few weeks in the campaign. Right. So you can get people to be more specific and be yes. efficient. And, and underlining that that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so evaluating your resources and capacity. So, you know, how do you engage as many voters as possible with the budget and staff you have? So we touched on this is just making sure that you have the resources or figuring out what your resources are to yep. touch as many voters as possible. Yep, absolutely. So your GOTV tactics. So mobile canvassing with minivan. So I wish, I so wish I had a <laughs> minivan. And, and, and in the next slide, um, minivan manager. While, you know, back in 2008, that would have been um, awesome. But instead of printing out all those oh flash sheets and oh or yeah. cutting all the turf right. all day and night. <laughs> um, so if anyone isn't using minivan and you have van access, definitely take a look at it. Reach out to your state party um, about minivan but Absolutely. it just helps with no longer having to print out all that paper. Yes. <laughs> and and I'm going to I'm going to go off about this. Like, I'm like I like to think of myself as the world leading maybe an evangelist. Yes. <laughs> um, so in 2012 um, when I was working on Senator Warren's campaign Using minivan was absolutely one of the things that I pushed very hard when I got on the ground sort of two months before election day. Mm -hmm. um, and for a lot of the reasons that you just outlined, but from my perspective, it's really something that, um, you know, when you're talking about what the number of hours that organizers and volunteers are spending printing and reprinting packets <laughs> and trying to cross check packets to make sure that you're actually keeping track of who already gets knocked. Mm -hmm. um, you know, minivan, we actually came out with some new features uh, just in the last year that people might not be aware of where, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have what's called team canvassing on minivan. So if you and I are out um, knocking off the same list, I'll be able to see what doors you knock. You can see which doors I knock. Right. Um, the other great thing about that is if that list gets a Assigned to somebody else for the second shift of the day, they're going to be able to see what the results were for yeah. all of the people on those right. lists. Like, so then you get less angry people less at the door. People. Like I just saw <laughs> people. Yes, no more of that. Um, <laughs> and I think you know, from a volunteer experience, the mapping features on minivan, the ability to sort of see where you are in relation to the turf that you're out in. Because mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, the ideal is that you have people knocking in their own neighborhoods, okay. talking to their neighbors, but um, that very, very rarely is able to happen. Right. Um, so again, thinking about how do you make people's time as efficient as possible. Right. Um, and then the last piece I will say, maybe not the last piece, <laughs> one of the last things I will say um, is for that last canvas shift, right? Mm -hmm. Again, I think we all know if you've been through GOTV, right. that last canvas shift is sort of your golden time. You're just out there, you're trying to get through to everybody who hasn't voted yet. Right. The time that you save of volunteers traveling back to the staging location mm -hmm. and then traveling back out to whatever turf you sent them to, Definitely. whereas if they're using minivan, you can just text out a list number yep. and say, well, either go back through the packet that you just went to or go right next door to where you were, right. five minutes away from where you were, uh -huh. and go through that one. Yeah. I mean, that's that's gold. Right, right. Yeah. And then no more data entry. No for, more data entry. <laughs> for organizers. I mean, I know the nights that have been stay, you stay mm -hmm. up after all those walk packets, you yes. feel so happy that you got all these doors, but now you have to put the data in to get it all reported back yep. to, you know, to the campaign headquarters or just to, you know, analyze all of yep. that information. No so, rainy packets. Oh, no more. Like no, no trash messy. packets. <laughs> no people just walking away with their packets. <laughs> right. Like calling people like, do you have the packet? Can you please bring it back? Right. I really need to put this exactly. data in. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and, and resource wise, right? Like it allows you to think through like, what are you saving on printers and extra toner and right. paper, paper, right? Staplers. Yes, Clips. the whole thing. <laughs> yes. You see, we love this. Yes, right now, we right? love Penny <laughs> <any> Man. <laughs> and then there's Mini Man Manager. Yeah. 
I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so quick story for me. I remember um, doing a campaign again, upstate New York, uh, state ledge campaign, and we had um, some folks, you know, create their own walk list and everything. Mm -hmm. They said, I know how to use Van. And we're I'm like, all right, sure. You know, wanted to kind of give them that, you know that responsibility and feel like they were part of the team and they built out this list um, and it wasn't the best list. <laughs> and the list had um, included, this is a Democratic campaign, included conservative men and they went knocking on the doors. Okay. Now when the papers came back, we're freaking out. We're like, why are all the numbers so bad? Yeah. Now with minivan manager, yes. all that data could have came back and we could have called it out so much quicker to right. say, hey, 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 let's stop. Right. We wasted like two shifts that day because we didn't notice that till after everyone came yes. back. So with Minivan Manager, you get the data coming back, you know, in real time. If you need to make any changes, you could do it right then and there yeah. to be like, hey, 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 I noticed something is wrong. Let's make those changes. Absolutely. So, and also making sure that if you have some canvassers just like hanging out in Burger King, or you know, which is a real story. Or I canvassers have. who get lost, right? Oh, that too. <laughs> <laughs> that too. I'm all I <laughs> I do think that's the other thing, right? Going back to what we were saying, of you probably have a bunch of new people who have maybe not canvassed for you through oh, the right. course of the campaign, yeah. or maybe less familiar with the turf that they're True. in. Um, and Minivan Manager allows you to see where all those canvassers are on the map. Right. And so you can see if somebody is just like walking around in a circle, <laughs> right? And you right. need to call them and be like, hey, are you lost? Right. <laughs> yes. Right. And yeah. yeah. So it's just so, super helpful to just have that as you know, just one of the resources to help move the campaign along and making yep. sure you're touching as many people as possible. Absolutely. And this is the beautiful map. This right. is what it will look like. Um, and just to dig in and on this a little bit, the, the little colored dots on the map would represent each of your canvassers and those map back to the people on the other side of the screen there. Um, and we've tried to bake in things, right? right. So um, again, thinking about, okay, the shift kicks off and then you maybe wanna check in uh, to Minivan Manager like 20 minutes later and make sure, okay, is everybody actually knocking, right? right? Mm -hmm. Because if somebody isn't, mm -hmm. you know, are they having trouble with something? You right. need to reach out to them, make yep. sure that they're doing okay. If somebody's contact rate looks super out of whack, right. same thing, right? Yeah. I think Minivan Manager just allows you to make those interventions a lot faster and a lot simpler than, yeah. to your point, waiting for the paper packets to come <laughs> back or somebody to call you an hour later and be like, I still can't find any of my doors. Right, right, <laughs> right. yep. And then there's your phone outreach. So um, Amanda, would you like to touch on that? Sure. Uh, so, you know, we have a number of phone tools. Again, I think, um thinking through the fact that the uh, the phone universe that you have, um, while there are, I, I think everybody recognizes, um, phone outreach in general um, has become much harder to do. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, tools like the predictive dialer or the live call tool or texting out reminders to people, I think actually become a lot more valuable mm -hmm. um, because it allows you to be a lot more efficient with your volunteers' time. Mm -hmm. um, so the predictive dialer, for instance, allows you to be three times as efficient, right? right. As, as paper dials or even as hand dialing on even something like open VPB or VPB, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, that you would be able to get through your list. And again, the goal of GOTV being to remind people hopefully multiple times right. over the course of GOTV and then on election day, um, you, you're working in a much more condensed time frame. Right. Um, so being able to get through those lists much more quickly is incredibly valuable. Um, and then the live call tool, this is something that's actually still a little bit newer um, mm -hmm. in our feature set, but um, it actually allows you to send a universe of people to a call center right. um, that we work with um, so that they can make those calls for you, mm -hmm. right? So this is something that I think is kind of interesting for people to think about, mm -hmm. either for something like early vote right. or just um, you know, polling location reminders, things like that, right? Um, again, thinking about the resources that you have and what you want your volunteers and your staff spending time on right. um, versus things that you might be able to, um, you know, if, if you have money in your budget mm -hmm. um, to just ensure that you're getting through that little chunk of universe, um, you, you know, this is another tool that you could use to do that. 
And then the last thing I'll mention is, you know, texting out reminders. There's a lot of tools out there. I think a lot of people are probably familiar with things like Hustle, mm -hmm. um, where you can send an SMS um, and you're able to send that uh, directly from from Van yep. um, over to that tool in order to, mm -hmm. to um, send those messages out. And then all the, the the data goes right back, yes. right? All and the so data comes right, right back. back on the text. All of the tools that we just talked about, yeah. um, it all goes right back into Van. So again, you're not dealing with exporting less and importing yeah. less yeah. and where did everything go? Those are all totally integrated. So features. then you could see exactly like who, you know, was reached out to by text or a predictive dialer and then exactly. see what those results were. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. I guess we're on our question time. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see what questions we have. Oh, um, apparently folks didn't um, hear the first plug about Analyst Institute. Okay. Um, I wanted to make sure uh, to give them another shout out. Mm -hmm. um, for folks who aren't aware, Analyst Institute uh, is an organization that has been working for years to do a ton of research and provide recommendations about GOTV, everything from messaging to potential tactics. Right. Um, you know, they go far more in depth than we just did <laughs> right. on a lot of the things that we just chatted about. So um, Analyst Institute uh, is, a, is a really amazing resource for people to talk about, or for people to look into. Okay, cool. So the second question. Um, Sign late, uh, oh, link to the recording? Yes, yes, we will have a <laughs> recording, um, a link to the recording for everyone after. Oh, what is minivan? Yes, I, we just assume everyone knows. <laughs> <Right. laughs> um, minivan is a mobile canvassing app. Um, mm -hmm. It is directly integrated with van. Mm -hmm. um, it is available to everybody, no matter what kind of van um, you have right. or are using. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can use it on iOS or Google devices, mm -hmm. so Android or iPhone. You can use it on phones and tablets, mm -hmm. um, and it's free for download yep. in the app or Google Play stores. Yep. Um, and yeah, essentially what it lets you do is just take any of the turfs you've cut or any lists that you cut, mm -hmm send it down uh, you can either I could say this turf is going directly to Ashley okay. and then when Ashley logs in you'd be able to see it yep. um, or you can actually just use any of the list numbers that get printed out at the right. bottom of any turf packet um, people can decide you know on the spot to download minivan they just have to log in with an action ID they don't need to have an actual you know van front end account in right. order to use it mm -hmm. and you just plug in that turf number and it's going to um, present you with all of the people on the list the script that got assigned to it um, and any of the additional information um, that you know like you might have things like Oh, how old is this person? Do you have um, some sort of target indicated for that person? Just like an asterisk if they're like a high priority person. Um, and it's amazing. Yes. You should use it. Yeah, so if, you have, if you're using Folk Builder Van, um, you have access to Minivan and you can also get the mini manual on yes. our website. So if you have any um, questions on how to like navigate that, just go to ngpvan.com and you'll find the mini manual to help you navigate that. Mm -hmm. All right, next question. Um, when we are phone banking, should we leave GOTV messages for fo those folks we don't reach? So, this is a controversial question. I know it is. So, <laughs> <laughs> let's see, okay. I'm of the opinion you don't leave a message. See, I think it depends. Okay. I think it depends. <laughs> okay. It all has to depend on, it, it, this is for me, it goes back to how many times are you actually going to try and get through the universe? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Like, if you feel like you have the capacity to be calling through people, um, like three times over right. the course of GOTV weekend, then I'm with you. Yes, right? Like, right. Don't leave people a message every right. time. But if you only have the ability to get through once, once true, okay. then I'm gonna lean towards yeah, I want to leave, leave message. people a message. Yeah, that makes sense for sure. So the answer is it depends. Yes, <laughs> depends on where you are, resources, yes. all of those. Yeah. If people need accommodations at, like I guess going to the polls or at the polls do they need to sign up ahead of time hmm. um. so I think uh, you know 
the I would say check in with uh, your local campaign on that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure I'm following the question entirely. Right. What I would say is you will get outreach from certain people, right? And especially if you're asking people if they're going to going to need a ride to the polls, right. um, it is really good to ask them right. um, if you know. For instance, if they have a wheelchair or something along those lines, right? right? Because um, I've been in those situations where a volunteer shows up and you don't want people to feel really uncomfortable, okay. right? Or not have the ability, like, if you roll up in like a, a tiny like a little car, right? right? <laughs> like if you have a smart car, um, you're right. not gonna be able to accommodate that. Right. Um, so I think just keeping track of those things mm -hmm. um, as, you're, as you're making the calls or getting through to people is really important. Right. Um, polling locations themselves should, should be ADA compliant, right. so that should be fine. Um, the actual poll workers and election officials in your local area, right. um, that, that should all be all set. Yeah. Oh, friend-to-friend um, -friend outreach. Oh, okay. This is a good one. How do we do friend-to-friend -friend outreach without risking the same people getting harassed multiple times? Uh, there's not too yeah. many times to no. harass people. <laughs> it's never too much. <laughs> and, and I think, right, like, no matter what, no matter what race you're working on, right. no matter what you're doing, um, somebody, and a lot of people probably, are going to say, you, you all me. won't stop bothering me, right? <laughs> like, and they're gonna say, if you bother me one more time, I'm not gonna vote. vote. No, no, that's, that's, that's not, not true. true. Not. <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing as contacting people too many times. Um, right. But the note I wanna make about friend-to-friend -friend outreach, right, mm -hmm. is again, I think that, um, I think friend to friend you can really consider kind of outside of your universe or mm -hmm. outside of the other activity that the campaigns are doing right. um, because it's me talking to Ashley. You're right. It's not, it's, just, it's not the, the campaign, campaign reaching out. Exactly. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So GOTV best practices for small down ballot primary races. So I, I would really say a lot of what we already talked about, right? Mm -hmm. um, again, you know, mileage may vary. Everything should be thinking through, like, what is specific to your campaign and mm -hmm. to your community. Right. Um, but overall, I think a lot of what we've discussed can really just be kind of retrofitted yes. or whatever that is. But yeah. you've also done. Yes. Yeah, just, uh, no, <laughs> yeah, I've done some down ballot. And again, yeah, it's helpful to do everything we mentioned. Just, you know, keeping in mind what your resources are. So maximizing your resources. For small down ballot races, you find the can the candidates, family and friends to come and help out. Like that's going to be your primary, you know, group of volunteers yeah. and people making calls. So just you know, again, maximizing your resources as much as possible. Awesome. Um, how can we exclude folks who have already voted from our GOTV list? So there's a couple different ways you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I. I don't want to get in trouble with any voter file administrators. Okay. So I'm going to say you should reach out to your voter file administrator yes. and ask them for the best way to do that. Um, but I will tell you there are a few different ways mm -hmm. to do that, um, <laughs> depending on how everyone has been constructing your universes. So reach out to, uh, to your van administrator. Yep. All right. So we're going to do some shameless plugs now. <laughs> uh, so definitely check out NGP Band's best in class tools and request a free demo. Um, and so the website um, is right there. Um, check out our webinar on canvassing as well. And then take advantage of our campaign um, headquarters resource library. Yeah, the, the resource library as well, I really want to put a plug in. That's something newer that we just rolled out this year. Um, and it has a bunch of different templates and training materials, both mm -hmm. for van, as you mentioned, minivan, if people were interested in learning more about minivan, we have this specific mini manual mm -hmm. um, that, that is in the Campaign HQ resource library. Um, but a, a lot of different tools out there um, for people to use that you can find on our website. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just wanted to put in one last plug, like I said, for the Analyst Institute. I mm -hmm. think um, if, if folks have the ability to go check out their website, um, there's a lot of great stuff there. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Okay. Oh, and there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Also, the five tools you need to survive GOTV. So, yes, lots of snacks, 
lots of water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sleep and stay hydrated. Yes. Actually, that should be your final word, yes. right? Yes. Like, thank you for everything that you're doing, yep. and you will not do anyone, let alone yourself, any good if you are a zombie or a dehydrated crazy person. <laughs> um, so take care of yourselves. No one gets a medal for staying up all night in a field office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Get some sleep and take care of yourselves. Yes. So thank you guys for joining. Yeah, thank you so much.